Velkommen til Social Selling Radio. Jeg hedder Leif og er en af værterne her på vores øh, lille podcast, som handler omkring social selling, content marketing, social business og alt, hvad der nu ellers rører sig omkring det at drive forretning via de øh, sociale medier nu om dagen. Øh, I dag er det en lidt anderledes podcast, fordi i dag der skal vi tale på engelsk, fordi jeg har besøg af en engelsk gæst, øh, der passer ikke. Han er faktisk kanadisk, ja. øh, men det kan I høre mere lige om et øjeblik, så øh, vi går lige over til at sige øh, welcome, Chris. Tak. Tak. <laughs> <laughs> ja. So, so Chris, I'll thanks copy. for having me on. That's uh, I'm so nice. Uh, so it's so nice. Sorry to be here. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, copy. Could you tell a little bit about um, who, who I are am, you? what I do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So like you said, I'm Canadian. Uh, I've been living in Denmark for about eight years now. So I really should know <laughs> Danish by about now. So, um, but uh, what I do is I'm uh, the CEO and founder of a digital marketing agency. And really that's only, you know, it sounds fancier than it is, but right now it's basically me and one other guy <laughs> and we do, you know, everything under the sun when it comes to digital marketing. So, uh, websites, social media, content marketing, uh, SEO, SEM, video productions. Mm-hmm. We do a ton of video production nowadays because video is just, you know, fantastic and people, mm-hmm. lots of clients want that. So, We do all of that. Um, like I said, I'm Canadian. I'm 34 years old. I got my start in marketing at a very young age. I was 14 years old. I did a internship at an advertising agency, fell in love with the industry. Um, 16 years by 16, I was cleaning up graphic files, working with the uh, graphic designer to you know service clients. And then the sort of the World Wide Web was sort of hitting hard at that point. So I... Um, i really fell in love with web design, mm. right? And started building websites and, and everybody wanted a website back then, right? It was like 1996, 97-ish yeah. in there, right? So it was yeah. really, you know, and everybody wanted a Flash intro. I don't know if you remember Flash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, so I did a lot of that as well, which was uh, super interesting and funny. So really got uh, into that and interested in that. And then I went off to college, took a degree in marketing and communications, and then From there, I went to uh, work for a venture capital firm, mm. of all things, which is you know strange. But uh, I went to work for a venture capital firm, helping them uh, do marketing and uh, digital marketing specifically for their portfolio, right? So they would buy companies, fix them up, and sell them, basically. And my team would come in and fix up their marketing. So we'd okay. look at their yeah. branding and look at their website and look at content and look at uh, their trade show program and all that kind of stuff. And we would we would fix it up and then help them and then move on to the next client. And we did that so many times. So it was really good learning ground for me on different industries and different tactics and really got into that. And then after that, I went to, uh, my wife is Danish. That's why I'm here. Mm. So uh, uh, we decided, where did we want to be? That's not why you're here. No, well, yeah. No, that's not why I'm (laughs) at the podcast. (laughs) My wife is Danish, so I had to come. That's part of the, uh, actually, when you have a Danish wife, they force you to come on the radio. Um, No, so that's why I'm in Denmark. Uh, My wife is Danish, and uh, we decided, where did we want to be? So we decided uh, here in Denmark. So. When I got to Denmark, I joined an advertising agency, uh, headed up their digital team there, and then from there went client side. Um, so I went to work for a big software company called SimCorp, doing their digital, and then on to another software company doing their digital. And then in January this year, I decided let's uh, let's try this building an agency thing that I keep hearing people about. So I started uh, building my own agency. Yeah. So. And striving for world domination. That's right. That's what I'm after right Denmark. now. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, it's a good place to do it. I mean, a lot of big companies come out of here. So, yeah. so I, I mean, yeah, it's fantastic here in this country. I really, I love it. So I don't think we're going anywhere, but world domination is on the table. On so, the table. <laughs> so just from Denmark, though, I think it's yeah. a good place. Nobody will see it coming. No, no, right? no. <laughs> from Denmark? No, it can't be. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. That's, that's right. That's where I'm at. 
Copy normally when I uh, interview people for our podcast, I always um, to establish since we are talking very much about building relation and networking and stuff right. like that. Yeah. Um, I always ask the question, where do we know each other from? Right. Yeah. Apart from your wife, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here, right? Uh, you know, actually, I think I remember I have, you sent me a oh, mail yes, or that's something. Right. Okay, so this so is, you you must have seen me somewhere. This is the story, actually. I when I was working at SimCorp, there was a project manager there um, that ended up uh, leaving the company and starting her own firm, and she had actually seen one of your presentations. And she reached out to me and said, these guys are really great. They're very similar to you. Uh, you should go and find them out and talk to them. And I said, okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So then I I think I, yeah, I messaged, I found you on LinkedIn and I messaged you and uh, I, uh, I said, hey, I'd really like to do something. I'd like mm -hmm. to maybe speak at one of your mm -hmm. events or whatever. And, yeah. and then you politely told me to, no, no, that's not going to happen <laughs> 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 ever. We don't do that. <laughs> so I was very sad and disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I went into a, uh, like a drinking binge for a while, I think. And you was, came out of that now. And, and I said, came out of that. Can we please do yeah, a podcast. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> no, no. So I was, yeah, I was, I was a course. I was crushed <laughs> and uh, decided to hang my head in shame for many months. But Finally, you agreed to have me on the show. Yeah. <laughs> no, so which I'm really pleased that you. Yeah, that's right. That so I suggested. stuck it out. So I really like you know, which can kind of feed into what we're going to talk about today. Mm. I think, but you know, I think it was just months of you know me and you back and forth on social media. Mm. You know, me commenting on your stuff, you commenting on my stuff, liking, sharing, all that kind of you know yeah. social media love, um, and. I think I reached yeah, out to you at the beginning of the summer and just said, hey, I'd really love to be on hmm? your podcast. Yeah. And you said, because you finally when, said uh, yes. Yeah, finally. <laughs> finally. I, I, I'm i really good at playing precious, you know. Mm. <laughs> you do it well. Yeah, well do it done. Well. I should do it too. <laughs> I'm too easy. <laughs> um, no, but but uh, because I remember the mail also and, and uh, um, uh, I think that not knowing you at that time and it it it, it, it that just like we're going to talk about uh, today is yeah. this about how do you develop uh, relationships via social media and stuff like that and right. it was like yeah but we need to know each other better yeah. and so I maybe thought, i went for the kill too early yeah i think I? that's what yeah. could be the issue. so i don't i really don't take my own advice uh very well so yeah, yeah. No, but um but actually i think the uh, the the cool thing was by actually trying to learn each other better by viewing each other's kind of content and the way you do things, mm. suddenly there was this, okay, uh, because maybe I had a, like, not necessarily the right picture of what you were actually doing and stuff right. like that. And this is where content yeah. helped me. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. Seeing that, okay, this yeah. is actually what COVID does. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, because you don't know necessarily, like, who's this, you know, who's this guy? Just contact me out of the blue. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about what he does and what he's about. Mm. Um, why would I, you know, why would I go and spend some time trying to figure that out? Yeah. Um, you know, and try to find a spot for him to speak at, like, mm. it's not, that's not what I do. Right. So I totally get it from your side. Mm. And, uh, and I think this is a lesson maybe for those of you listening is that, you know, just because I got a no didn't mean I wasn't in it for the longer term and just saying, you know what, fine. He says no today, mm. but give it six months and he's going to say yes. Yeah. So a lot of salespeople and social selling in general would, would sort of take that no and then they would go away. Yeah. Right. They, you never see them again. Yeah. They would say, okay, yeah. All right, fine. And then move on to another prospect or another Avenue. Whereas I think what's been great about what we've developed is that both of us sort of said, okay, there's a, there's a potential here mm -hmm. for maybe something. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's explore that over yeah. months and months and months and months and months. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, think and also this like, that 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 the dialogue moved from the initial private messaging, yeah, out in the social media where we started. Right. Okay, that's a cool view, or I right. agree on that, or I disagree on that. Exactly. So that that you were yeah. growing on on, uh, on on the perspective of people, I, and I learned yeah. because just like when you came here today, I asked you, is is this the way you do the video setup? Because I'm a I'm a huge fan on, on yeah. the, the format, the, the quality, and, yeah. and your messages. Right. Uh, I think it's a really cool way of doing things. So so yeah, exactly. So you're actually able to yeah. learn from the social media part. 
yeah, you form, uh, yeah, exactly. And, but it also, it also takes that both parties are actually contributing on social. It actually takes that both parties are making content yeah. to be able to form that, um, picture. Yeah. Right. If that, if it's not the case then it, it makes it hard, but I mean, there is, there's a ton of information on social about people. So, I mean, even if somebody's not posting regularly, you can get a quite good picture of who they are by just following their LinkedIn, looking at what they're liking. Yeah, comments. Yeah, exactly. Some, yeah. Just going into that and, and sort of, yeah, picking apart. Yeah. Okay, what is this person actually interested in? Right, so you can do that as well. So it doesn't always have to be through content. It could be many different ways, but content is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, Kobe, we have, uh, first of all, we already been speaking for an hour and a half or something before <laughs> even pressing record. <laughs> But I think uh, um, we have a few topics that we would like to cover. But other than that, I think it's going to be like a social selling jamming I session. Love it. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so uh, before starting the, the the record button, we were talking about let's talk about uh, social selling in general. Right. What, where we see the phenomenon are, are moving, or right. good yeah, tendencies, yeah. or uh, trends, or bad yeah. trends. Yeah. Talk about content. Talk a little bit about networking. Um, Talk about uh, the maturity in regards to different kind of, of uh, industries. Right. And so yeah, it's yeah. going to be mixed up. There's no. Uh, no, no, I love there's it. There's a few words in, in, and great. headlines, but um, other than that, it's, it's just going to be chat. We don't want. We don't. We've been recording for about eleven minutes now. We don't know we're going to record for fifty or yeah. two hours. We'll yeah. just wait and see, and, and hope people will stay uh, tuned. Perfect. I yeah. hope you guys stick around because uh, it's going to get fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Let's start with social selling. Okay. That's a good one. Copy. What's your, uh, when, when I still meet a lot of people say social selling, what is it? Right. Yeah. What, what's, what's my take on it? Yeah. What's your take on it? Uh, you know, social selling is just, you know, it's a, it's a new word, I guess I would say, but it's not any different than sort of old school selling in my mind. Um, sales as I know it, is, and I've always done it this way, is about relationships. Mm. I mean, you need to build trust. You need to have people that um, that are interested in what you do and are willing to buy from you, right? And you've got they've got a need and, and you've got a product to sell. So I believe that social selling, even though it's a newer term, is actually just uh, sort of putting a word on what we do currently, which is using social platforms to do it at scale. So um, I really don't think it's it's much, much different than just regular old school sales. Mm -hmm. We just now do it in a different platform. Yeah. Right? So that's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, our definition in, in when we go out to lectures and stuff like that, do presentations on it, is, is more or less the same that we say. It's, it's basically a method uh, right. in, in how to... Uh, handling the sales process on today we just do the sales process digitally or right. on social media but yeah. i think it's very much or has the the it's very much the same as in yeah. the old way of doing it. i think the issue in many ways is that first of all many sales people don't understand that they of course in a way can bring the old method yeah but typically what happens is they think they can put the old method on steroids right yeah and yeah. then both right. scale and do it much, much faster. Right, right, right. Well, I think well, I think you can do it. I think everything is long term in this uh, in this game. But I think you can do things a little bit at scale. And by that, I mean, um, I think in the old days when you had a relationship and you had to try to nurture a relationship with business partners or um, or colleagues or potential sales or prospects or whatever it is, I think. You could only do that with so many people, mm. right? So you had account managers and key account managers, and they managed a few, you know, big time clients or whatever, and, and they only had a few people in their network that they had to take care of and go take, you know, on golf trips or whatever. <laughs> um, I think where we are now with the social media platforms is you can do it at scale, meaning that you can maintain relationships with people many more people i think than you could have in the past mm. you can keep tabs on people you can um you know you don't have to call them to say hello you can just simply like or mm. make a comment so you can keep in contact with people 
at scale. Uh, and I think that's a main differentiator. That's a main thing about, you know, what is the net brought us today and that you can, you can actually develop really great deep relationships now using social media because you can, you can, you know, really get into someone's life. Um, you can get, you know, you can see photos of their kids right instantly. You can, you can comment on, oh, that was a, a, you know, nice new car you have or whatever it is. And you can much quicker and much easier be a part of someone's life. Mm. And I think that's an important aspect of social selling. And I think it's actually one that maybe a lot of salespeople sort of miss is that, you know, this whole development of a relationship with a client or a prospect, you can get much, much closer with mm. specifically with the tools that we have today. Yeah. Right. Whereas, you know, maybe in the past you just sort of knew them in a professional capacity you can actually be friends with a prospect on Facebook or, you know, follow their Twitter and see what they had for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. say, oh, you like Mexican. I like Mexican. That's interesting. We should maybe, you know, I know this great place that has the best chimichangas. Mm. We should go there. It's yeah. fantastic. We didn't have that before. Right. So now we have these tools. And I think a lot of salespeople sort of miss that element and they mm. sort of, they kind of maybe uh, forget that. Right. But but the fun thing here is the typical reaction I uh, get when we have these discussions with salespeople is that they tend to be a little bit afraid of going into that part because they say, I, I, I don't want to be friends with, with them on Facebook. It's professional on right. one hand. So so there's still this, ah, can I just, should can I really, or, they can yeah. see in my feed what I'm eating, <laughs> where <laughs> right. I'm going. Right. But the fun thing is salespeople has, at least those who are really good at relationship, have always been interesting in their uh, client's personal life. Where are you going for holiday? How right. are your kid doing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all these things yeah. where the difference is now that in the past, in the old days, they had to ask for this information. Yeah. Now they can get it yeah. by just looking at it, very yeah. experience these things. Yeah, and that's what I mean by sort of at scale. And I think, I think that um, we're at a point now we're kind of going backwards in a way like where you actually can have really great professional and personal um, connections with people um, that you do business with. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I was at, um, I was at a client's on Monday and I think we caught it on camera. I think it's going to be in our vlog, but a number of my clients gave me a hug that day. Mm. And I don't think that's, that's kind of a special thing. And I don't think a lot of people experience that. And I think that um, for me, I've been able to do that because I try, I don't try very hard. It comes natural in some ways, but I'm very uh, conscientious of the fact that I want to develop deep personal relationships mm. with everybody I do business with because I believe that it pays off. Not in terms of money in my wallet. Of course, that's nice, but it pays off in life. Right. So I believe that people should develop personal, deep relationships with people they do business with mm. because it's just going to enrich their lives. Now, the, the tools we have available with social selling tools like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I Snapchat with my customers all the time. Mm, yeah, actually. You mentioned I think that. We were yeah. talking about that. Um, what do you Snapchat? stuff pictures like videos of hey, or doing like a funny like video hey how's your weekend going or mm, okay. whatever right and that's <laughs> that's super interesting and i think you know they become a part of my life and i become a part of their life and mm. every salesperson i think should strive for that mm. because i think that's where the gold is do you Both. think there's going to be a change over the coming years where this hardcore professional salesperson who's just go to work do his quota, go back, no relationship other than we need to go golfing once in a while. Do, do you think that's going to disappear or is it? No, I mean, there's always going to be those people, but they're they're going to just make quota. They're not going to be the super rock stars. Hmm. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be those salespeople that are consistently the best salespeople in their industry, right? They're going to do fine and they're probably going to have a great life and but they won't break out and be massive successful, hmm. right? So I think and success in this aspect is not necessarily quota. No, it's the relationship, yeah, the quality. Because, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, um, 
yeah, the enrichment of life, just being able to have those per- personal relationships and those those travel with you throughout life, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so if they move to another company or if, you know, for example, one of my clients just had a baby, you know, and we're chatting on Skype about it and I've got pictures of the new baby and, and stuff like that. Like that's, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. Like that's super powerful. And I think many salespeople have to start thinking like this if they want to um, both feel good about what they sell about what they do, because a lot of salespeople they kind of, kind of disconnect to what they do. Yeah, I agree. right. They think, okay, I make gotta make a quota. I gotta these these people are just a a bank. I just have to you know I have to ring the register, hmm. right? Well, do you really want to live like that? Do you really want to have that sort of mentality? Why not take it a step further? Why not think about it in terms of building these personal relationships? What could you do then, right? Hmm. What kind of business could you have? And I think that's. That's where I do it. Not everybody's going to do it like that, but I think they should. Yeah. That's an ideal world, and I know that that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. I know that, you know, especially if you're a startup, especially if you're a struggling company, uh, it's hard to say no to those contracts that you know are going to, you know, feed everybody's, you know, kids that are working at your company. Mm-hmm. I know that, so I'm not, I'm not oblivious to those types of situations. So, um. So I would never advise somebody, hey, turn away business, especially if it's, you know, feeding your company and it's make, and it's mm. like making things work for you. Um, but I think you have to take it all with, um, you know, having a clear mind about what is this yeah. contract? What is this client? How is this contributing to my life? Mm. And if you can make a decision later down the line to say, you know what, this is not a one, this is not a two-way relationship. This is a, you know, we're taking more than, you know, we're getting from you or you're taking more from us than we're getting from you, then I think, you know, you have to reevaluate those things and say, okay, we don't want to work with you anymore, yeah. right? But but I know that, I mean, I, if if a big company came to me tomorrow and said, we really want to work with you, and I was like, well, I don't really, you know, feel for this, I'd be kind of hard-pressed to say no, <laughs> right? <'Cause, laughs> I mean, I like to grow my company, right? Yeah, yeah, so, sure. But I might reevaluate things. Yeah. And that's the same with employees. That's the same with everything. I mean, um, I watched a really good, um, I was at, uh, I was at uh, a big tech festival in the, uh, in the spring here. And I watched, uh, the CEO of Buffer, hmm? which is a, um, a sort of social uh, media posting tool company. And they had actually just fired something like 30% of their staff. And he was talking about culture and he was talking about the culture that you have at the beginning might not be the culture that you want right you have to be open to evolution Mm. you have to be open to say that worked then but doesn't work now right so they actually had to get rid of a number of employees that didn't necessarily fit where they wanted to go with the company and that was kind of hard but he was like it was they didn't fit they fit at the beginning Mm. absolutely from a cultural standpoint but not now and that's kind of weird to look at it like that. And that can be the same with clients. They fit now, why not fit in the future? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. But I think the, the, the um, uh, it's quite interesting to discuss this, this subject. Um, I think this uh, social selling and the, the social media platforms in general used in the right way can be extremely powerful. And, and, and our, in, in my term, in general, very, very, very underestimated. I yes, mean, it's, 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 100% it's, agree. It's really powerful. The, yeah. the, the connections you can create, it might take time. It, it, it typically takes time. Uh, but but the, the strength and the quality you can create through these are, are completely underestimated. Yeah. On the other hand, used in a wrong way, <laughs> yeah. it, it makes it can go the wrong way fast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, and and I think the um, uh, and that's an issue for the organization that they uh, the typical of when we meet sales because it's often start with sales organization in in our uh, company. Right. Um, the issue is often that they're looking for this blue pill. Yeah, they just we're, want like how solve my problems and we're behind yeah. quota this yeah. quarter. We, right. we can continue. Uh, 
Uh, Give us the blue pill. Yeah. yeah. It's very hard with uh, cold calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work working. anymore. Yeah, Can yeah. you help us? Uh, and we'll <laughs> be by, it would be really nice if we're, um, yeah. we're hitting the target again by uh, the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think the, the issue is here that... that uh, Wouldn't that be nice? That would be really good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. I think like, yeah. if it was only the case of just hiring somebody who had that magic and yeah. said, okay, oh, now we're making our quota. Yeah, but, but it doesn't exist. No, no, no. Yeah. And and uh, and I think the issue is here that that many organizations think it's a blue pill. Right. And they don't they they haven't sat down yeah. and they either uh, actually hired some people or, or right. working together with some people who are have, have this knowledge, but actually it's just understanding how does this tool yeah. or these tools, the method, how does it work? Right. And yeah. I think uh, that's another thing that I would like to uh, to discuss with you, uh, also because yeah. you had a a, a blog about this and about uh, right Somebody the experience. Like, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I could talk about that really quickly. <laughs> so, I mean, I think everybody's gotten this is that typical, you know, connection request on LinkedIn. Okay, except they look decent. They look like they're in my industry. I say yes, and then thirty seconds later, I get a. Uh, and a message in my inbox, you mm. know, hey, thanks for connecting with me. I'm from so and so company, and we sell this and we do that. And if you're interested in a meeting, uh, contact me at this number anytime. Blah blah blah, right? And it's just, come on, like, does that really work? It's like, it's like cold calling back in the back in the days, right? Picking mm, up the phone yeah. and just calling any company and saying, hey, uh, we do this. Uh, do you want to buy from us or do you want to take a meeting with yeah. us? It's just, it's ridiculous, right? So I, I totally agree with you. You say, you know, you can do it the wrong way, right? Social selling, or you can do it the right way. And many companies think that it's, okay, we'll just take cold call canvassing and, and put it on social media. Yeah. And that'll just, that'll solve all of our problems, right? Yeah. And it's it's totally the opposite. Yeah, and, yeah. and the issue, as, uh, as we also discussed before we started recording, was that uh, I think... Uh, it's actually even faster to turn down the uh, the uh, this request for oh, something. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to take the phone. No. <laughs> you can actually make it even worse. You can block the person. Yeah, yeah. He's really irritating. That was not what I thought he wanted to do. No. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we we, we started to experience uh, a, a, a sad tendency in the market right now. That yeah. is that some of the people who used to help companies doing cold calling right just do this now so the marketing companies yeah because they're losing their business yeah. on the phone business yeah yeah they're moving the business on linkedin yeah yeah, yeah. and they start to do telemarketing yeah on linkedin yeah it's, it's so, super sad and i i really feel for bad for companies that go into this because it's and it's just gonna end up hurting your brand um in the long run um because it doesn't it doesn't look good for for who you are and how you want to run your company, I guess, and how you think mm-hmm. about um, sales and how you think about business relationships, and I think that's um, that's super sad. And I, I um, I've never bought anything this way. No, I no. haven't talked to anybody who's bought in this way. Um, so it's like, why? I mean, lots of people forego sort of their sort of um, you know what's the word their instincts or forego their you know good thoughts or normal thoughts about what is you know how does stuff work when it comes to sales and marketing they sort of like you know what's what's common or not common knowledge but what's sort of what would i like done to me Mm -hmm. to buy a product yeah they sort of like they take themselves out and say yo but our prospects must like this well do you like this Mm. No, you don't like to be sold like this. So why would your prospects like to be sold like this? Mm. Which I, is I, funny. Like I don't understand that. I actually had a call this morning uh, from a Danish newspaper from from um, the sales department. Okay. Probably a young guy. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> the phone call were more or less like this. First of all, he, the phone called it said just private number. I, I took it anyway. Some some of the, our clients has private number settings and yeah. And, uh, okay. And yeah. then it was just like uh, hello. Uh, and it took me about uh, millions of a second to, to spot. And it's a telemarketer. This is a telemarketing yeah. company. Yeah. Or you can hear them in the background, the, the other phones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know immediately. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a stock, old school stock. Um, but then he said, yeah, uh, and I said, who's this? I didn't, I, I'm sure he, he tried to do this so he could hear me tell him 
my name so I could check be checked. Is this correct? Ah, uh, yeah, because many Danes go hi, uh, live yeah. speaking, yeah, yeah or live here, or whatever. So I said, who's talking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Anas Anas and whatever from this and that <laughs> newspaper. Anas Anas. Uh, yeah, Anas Anas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then he said. Uh, I'm just calling to confirm to to get confirmation. And is this uh, the company name? And th- is this your address? And I was just like, What's immediately said, here? "What what are you trying to do?" It, yeah, it's it's just because uh, I was going to offer you uh, 10 days uh, free delivery of this newspaper. And I said, "So you're trying to trick me into this by first confirming that the address yeah. is correct, and then you're going to do the sales pitch." And then yeah. then I said, I got really pissed on him and I said, yeah, of "Seriously." because I had a couple of calls this week and, and at, at the same time. So I said to him, seriously, do you think this is the good way to do a a, 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 a call canvassing, to me, yeah. a canvassing call? I said, by the way, I've been training loads of your your yeah. persons. I said, if you're sitting next to me and you said that, I would say, stop talking to customers like that. First of all, you yeah. didn't ask whether you were you're, yeah. uh, annoying me or uh, interrupting me. Right, right, right. Uh, secondly, you're not trying to buy yourself uh, a little bit of, of uh, good vi- vibes right. and yeah, feels yeah. by actually creating the, the environment that allows us to have a, a good conversation. Yeah. Uh, and now you're trying to trick me. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And I said, seriously, would, and, and I asked him, said, What would happen if I called you and tried to sell you to to you that way? Would you like that? And I said, and he said, no, 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 no. I wouldn't buy anything. No. Said, Why the hell are you trying to call me yeah. and say that? All said, common sense goes out the window. Completely. I said. Like... So I think you should. And then I said, <laughs> because I was annoyed, I said, the next customer you're calling, please reconsider what you're saying to him. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Yeah. And yeah. and I think the issue here is <laughs> is really that. Some of this methodology, people, certain people, not everybody, not because everybody. there are good, no, no, good guys great out there. Salespeople out yeah. there, right? Like, but but unfortunately, some of these telemarketing companies are now trying to tell the companies that we can move the telemarketing part to LinkedIn yeah. and create results. Yeah. But they completely missed the point that you can't make results. No. It doesn't work right that way. It, no. The direction is more or less the same. They're trying yeah. to connect with you, yeah. and then the second one is, hey. Spy something. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I mean. It's just all common sense goes out the window. Yeah. Right? Like they just, okay, do you think that's going to, that wouldn't work for you? It's not going to work for your prospects. No. Right? So you really have to get into it and think, how would I like to be sold to? And and follow that. Mm-hmm. Think about that. And yeah. then you'll do probably much, much better. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah. We normally uh, tell salespeople that, uh, and uh, of course it's a, a way of just trying to make it a little bit fun to say that, Ideally, we would like to meet a girl, fancy her during the night, kiss her, have a baby with her. She can deliver and, and everything, and then you can be married the next morning and yeah. just like everything. But in the real world, we know that it can take. <laughs> I know some people can do it in weeks, a month. Well, <laughs> but yeah. but in the real world, it probably fast bought, movers. Yeah, yeah, fast movers or late late. Uh, I guess late in the sales funnel. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Right, but 40, uh, but it's probably plus. closer to seven years than it is to yeah, yeah, seven yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Right? Uh, so, yeah. and that's actually also why we call we actually call social selling for slow selling. Yes, I love that. That it yeah. it's just like fine Italian cuisine that, yeah. it, that it takes time to yeah. develop good things. Absolutely. Um, what what and back to scale. Yeah. On the other hand, what we can compensate for is when it takes longer time. We could do it more efficiently on yeah. a bigger scale. On on on. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So so uh, yeah. and and that's our take on it when we talk yeah. to customers, saying, yeah. it's going to take some time. Yeah. But on the other hand, you can handle a yeah. large number of clients this way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how I look at it as well. It's it's hundred percent. It's like, it's uh, you can do it at scale, but it needs the same amount of love and same amount of patience as ever. But you can just do more of it. Yeah. Um and I think that um I think that many many companies don't really grasp that. They don't really think about long term. They don't think about okay, we're going to get a social selling program in place now, but we won't see the benefits of that for a year or two, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's a return on investment thing. I mean, unless you're a day trader or you're doing some weird binary options <laughs> thing, um you're not really seeing return on investments on stocks for years right you buy something at a low price and then you know a 
couple of years later, it's it's doubled or it's tripled or it's mm. 10 times or whatever, right? And that's how I look at these types of tactics. It's it's the slow game. It's the the long game, I would say. Not necessarily slow, but it's, it's a long game. It's going to mm. take a little bit to make it actually produce um, produce something. Now, the good thing is that if you're doing it at scale and you have many things going at the same time, stuff will start to fall in place and momentum will be like, and momentum then, I say, I always say momentum creates momentum, mm. right? Because then, you know, as you start closing more stuff, you see more stuff closing because you're confident, right? Um, you've been doing this for a while. You get better at it. Mm. And so, you know, they say, okay, it may take you a year to get going, but then you're going to hockey stick, basically, yeah, yeah. right? You're, you're going to get better and better and better at it, and then you're just going to grow yeah. really fast with it because you're better and you've been doing this a while, and that momentum is just going to carry on and carry on and carry on, yeah. right? So, like, give it a year yeah. of doing it. Give yeah, it and a solid I'd, year, and then you'll see some results. Yeah. Right, and, and and then I think the 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 the, the uh, advice also to the companies is that just like your salespeople are doing a lot of things that you just can't measure or necessarily see. Right, you you you, you tweak small things. You do this. You do that. Yeah. You send that. You you tweak your presentation. Yeah. You talk a little bit with the the, the colleague. That pitch didn't work. Or how do you do it? Right. There's, there's a, a million small tweaks. Yeah, the there's same. many keys to unlock those doors, yeah. right? Like it's not all one thing and it's and it's multiple things. And, yeah. And you'll never, I mean, the minute you think you've found a process <laughs> is the minute that it changes, right? Like you find, okay, this absolutely must work. And then, mm. ah, you know what? Actually, it didn't really work that time. Maybe we need to just adjust this slightly. And yeah. then you find a new sort of angle into it. But I mean, if you have, if you have eyes on the prize, <laughs> for a longer term, then these small tweaks don't matter, right? They're always going to, not always, but most of the time, they're going to bring you success, right, if you have that. But if you're just looking for, ah, we just make this little tweak and it should bring sales next week, it's not going to work that way. It's not going to, no, right? no, no, It no, just no. doesn't. No, no. No, and, and I think that that's that's where I think salespeople should just, if, if they could just bring the finesse, the details that they do, in the analog world, the, the traditional yeah. way, and think the just imagine what are the, all the details you right. do in your yeah. daily sales work right. in the past. Yeah. If you transfer these into the digital yeah. platforms, that's when you create results. Absolutely. If if I just look at on it, and uh, I had a lot of meetings today, so it's maybe not a, a typical day, but a typical day. Uh, write a piece of content, write a blog post, maybe make an image file for it, do a little video, go in and on LinkedIn, make. 10, 20, 30 comments, a few yeah. likes, uh, yeah. go into the messaging part. Uh, we talk about, you know, in radar height and below radar, or that that a lot of, of success in social selling is not visible to the to, right. to everybody yeah. because that's happening in the messaging part. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. All these details are details that I would have done differently in the analog world, but, right. but it's not one post. Right. It's not one like. No, it's not one. And in the analog world, it's not one phone call. No, it's not one lunch. It's not one dinner. It's not one gift. It's not one business card drop off. It's not one presentation. It's not yeah. all these. It's it's a multitude of things that cascade, and eventually, you know, at the end, turn out business, yeah. right? Or not. I mean, that's the other thing too. Is that, um, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this. I have, where or someone's actually doing fairly good on the social selling side. I would say they're doing okay, and then they get met with a no on some level and then it's like desert you know like you know the old westerns mm. tumbleweed yeah. goes by <laughs> and you don't hear from them forever maybe until next quarter mm. or something like that yeah, yeah. and it's like you know it makes everyone feel dirty at that point right like you're kind of left feeling like uh okay they didn't really want to develop a relationship mm. they didn't really want my business well they did want my business they just wanted it now and because they can't get it, then it's, you know, move on, on to the next. Now, I know salespeople can't obviously follow up with every single prospect and, you know, maintain relationships with people that maybe will never buy. So I'm not saying that. Like, there are definitely what we call tire kickers. Mm. I don't know if you guys have that. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> people that will never buy, but just like to dream about buying. Mm. So you have to, you have to, you know, play that a certain way. But... Most of the time, 
the best stuff that's come out of my business is stuff that I just stuck with. Hmm. Stuff that I said, okay, they said no today, but they're not going to say no next year. Hmm. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to go dark. That doesn't no, mean no, that no, I'm no. going to like say, okay, then no more likes or comments for you. <laughs> and like the soup Nazi and Seinfeld. <laughs> No, oh, more that's li- great no more likes, no more comments. No, it's not like that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, I want a relationship with this person, mm. a professional relationship. So how do you do that? Well, it takes nurturing. Mm. It takes attention. It's like if you wanted to date the hottest girl in high school and you were a guy like me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not going to take like, it's not going to take one asking out. And, you know, one flower on our doorstep, it's going to take thousands of flowers on our doorstep over a year. And, you know, standing outside of her, of her bedroom window with a boom box, and <laughs> it's going to take a number of tactics over a long time. And she'll say no every time. But eventually that girl's going to go out with me. Yeah. Right. So it's like it's that kind of mentality mm. that salespeople and so people trying social selling i think really need to to adopt Mm. and start thinking about is okay this is going to take a while i'm gonna get a lot of rejection and that's okay because i know this company needs my product they they have the budget they can afford it and this is going to help them it's going to bring them value so of course i'm going to stick with it yeah until one day or that person goes to another company and then they get a totally different mandate and Mm. they say you know what Man, that guy life, he really, he was really interested in what I was doing. And I'm going to call him up because, you know, we need this in our company. And this this is where I think the the, the social selling uh, methodology and the tools are so powerful. Yeah. Uh, I, I often use the example where you get a no. Right. Initially, you get a no and they say, we don't have a budget right now. Or yeah, yeah. We're not here. Or There's going to be organizational change and stuff like that. Whatever the reason That's might be. That's a good be. one. I like yeah. that one too. Yeah. But unlike the phone, unlike right. the classic sales where you, where you can still do certain things, right? This is where, for instance, a pulse blog post, a video, a post right. on your website, content. You you yeah. you can do so much with subtle interventions yeah. towards the customer. Saying, uh, "It's been a while since we uh, we talked, uh, Copy." I yeah. hope everything has been good, doing well. You had a nice summer holiday. We talked back there when you mentioned this problem. Yeah. I just did a, a video about that issue where we actually have a customer case. I thought they could maybe have your interest. Yeah, Takes absolutely. three minutes to look, so so yeah. enjoy. Uh, give me a comment if you like or yeah. if there's any questions. You can yeah. do it in a very not invasive way. Right. And and this is this for me is 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 the perfect tool for yeah. nurturing. Yeah, it really is. In a very subtle yeah. way, you can you can continue yeah. to. I always show people can't see this. Uh, they can see it on the video, but it, this this exercise about taking people on the shoulder and then right. giving them a piece of right. valuable content. Yeah, to help them with their job. Yeah, or if something they have, they're yeah. interested in. Yeah, and and 100%. if you do this in 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 a very authentic way, yeah, uh, yeah. honest way, yeah. this is about getting close. Eventually, yeah. when they get into the situation where now they really have the need, now they have the budget. It's right. it's really urgent. Yeah, they'll remember you. Absolutely. Yeah, but you have like that's a hundred percent agree, right? Yeah. Content is, I mean, I you know I produce a lot of content, mm-hmm. or at least I try to, um, and it's a it's a way of staying top of mind. It's a way of um, it's a way of expressing yourself. Obviously, it's a way of expressing your philosophy. Not everybody's gonna love your philosophy, but mm-hmm. and it is a great way to keep in contact with with potential clients and current clients, like. Um, you know, we do a vlog and I do the cubby show and oftentimes, um, customers are in that somehow. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting too, is like bringing them into the content. Yeah. Right. Which is kind of funny. I've, I had a, I had somebody who was trying to sell me something, do a very smart tactic and I'm going to use it cause it's so good. I think it's good anyway. So what they did is they, they reached out to me via email. So they got my email address and said, cubby. I love what you're doing here and there on this and that platform. I'm writing an article about successful leaders. How do successful, what are the two best habits of successful leaders? Can you give me two lines and I'll feature you in a blog post? Others that are already doing 
this or this person, this person, this person. So I can see like, okay, my peers are already mm -hmm. sort of in on this. And this is, and he, and he works for a software company that sells some sort of tool that probably is pretty relevant for me. And I love that because now it's, now it's about, um, it's about me being in his content, mm. right? So it's not just necessarily like, here's a, here's a piece. It's also like doing somebody a favor. Mm. It's also like, Hey, we're going to feature you. It's like, I'm, you know, on your podcast today, right? It's like, I'm going to feature you in this, do you a favor. And maybe mm. down the line, absolutely, some point you'll look at this software that we're selling and want to do a demo or want to do whatever, or even want to use it. Right. So that's, that's kind of powerful as well is getting those getting those people involved in actually creating your content. Mm. That's also why like case uh, study videos are really great to do with clients is actually like, hey, can we sit down and do a video of you saying how mm. great we are? <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, like most, absolutely. Will, most will say yes, absolutely. We'll yeah. make you make them look like rock stars, make them look, mm. you know, amazing. And, um, and that's, you know, that really can develop and strengthen a relationship. Yeah. Right, so I think I also believe in that kind of content. We we have, I'll just hand over for this 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 example with our podcast where, uh, right. um, uh, the second last uh, one we did or third now, uh, with uh, Alex Rasmussen who was the sales director for FC Copenhagen. It's a very good example. A client yeah. of us, yeah. who uh, we 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 asked him, Alex, would you like to share your story on why you said no and and goodbye to uh, uh, cold calling and right. good day to uh, to social selling? Right. And of course, it's it's a platform where he can expose his company and his role. Yes. But he yeah. was actually uh, so kind to share his story. What was easy? What was hard? Yeah. How was the salespeople reacting to him? Yeah. And and it's just so it it's such yeah. a powerful way of, of telling the stories. Yeah. Well, it's really bringing value to people, right? Because it can raise their profile, right? It helps you with content, um, gives them a chance to shine, right? right? And I think that's people love that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I agree on the one side where you're saying, you know, content and, and sort of using that to uh, provide value to people. And then on the other side, it's also trying to get people into your content, right? And that's just about relationship building. Yeah. Like, it's very strong. I mean, there's a lot of um, YouTubers that have built massive YouTube followings by showing up in other YouTubers mm. stuff, right? Like that's a very common thing. So I think we'll see much more of that actually in the future with content with as more people produce content as more, you know, um, salespeople or any people start doing blog posts or LinkedIn posts. There's mm. a lot of people that are doing LinkedIn posts. Now they'll get savvy to this and say, Hey, you know, I should, we should, you know, me and this other guy, we should trade posts. Like, I'll talk about you in my post and you talk about me mm. and then sort of like do this sort of trade-off yeah. shout-out thing. Sort of like, you know, a little bit how on Snapchat you can, you know, do Snapchat takeovers, which is I give you access to my account. Mm. Uh, I get access to your account and then we can talk to each other's audiences, you know, and, yeah. and sort of build our following that way. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something else interesting that I think hasn't yet really hit LinkedIn, mm. but I think it will. It will. Yeah, I think it absolutely. will start seeing more of that, like people in industries sort of helping each other out yeah. and sort of building these relationships, right? Yeah. So yeah, and, it's, and again, uh, where, where I'm very enthusiastic about it is that it's so powerful. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, even though you're young, uh, I'm not that young. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 34. I got two kids. Millennials, so, uh, yeah. late millennials. I'm on the yeah. Someone called me the millennial. A millennial the other day, and I was like, nah, nah. <laughs> I can't even claim that. You know, like. Um, yeah. I think but, if but, you own a Berlingo, you're not a millennial. <laughs> you have a Berlingo? <laughs> no, I don't, but, but I'm thinking about one, actually. Uh, okay. Maybe. Why not, you know? Yeah. Should put everything It's versatile. It's very, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what my wife says. It's very versatile. You fit lots of stuff in there. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but, uh, no, but what, I, where, what I was uh, to talk about it as an example is I, I remember having these brochures where you were talking about your product and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and every fifth page, there was this customer testimonial. Right. Where yeah. where they had and that that's what we did in the old days. Yeah. There, I'm sure there's actually companies who are doing it right now. Absolutely, yeah. But I've but again, this is where I think it, it, the times that we live in is just you can do a fantastic video in yeah. in 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 10 yeah. minutes, yeah. Uh, and give it 
uh, other than just one page, and you can get, bring it destroy so much to life using yeah. these technologies. Absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, it's 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 right there at our fingertips, and literally, like, take out your iPhone. Yeah, use it. Yeah. Get people to say something like nice and interesting.